Hi, everybody. Alexi and I welcome you to our podcast on medical breakthroughs. And this one is as big as it gets. And it's called the triune brain. And the brain is extremely complex. When I taught medical students over 50 years ago, we had to know 3000 different structures in the brain, extremely complex. But the new model is extremely simple and explains quite a bit. And it was developed by the head of the National Institute of Mental Health in the 50s, Dr. Paul McLean, and it's the accepted model today by most experts. And the beauty is that it's based on Mother Nature herself, evolution. So it's called the triune brain, and we have all three. So it's a beautiful, beautiful evolutionary model. And it's very, very simple to understand, actually. It's very intuitive. The lowest is the reptilian brain, okay, which reptiles have. Now we have that also, that's in the brain stem. The centerpiece of the brain stem is called the medulla. And the reptilian brain uh, just does what I call good housekeeping. It keeps us alive. It keeps the heart beating. It keeps the lungs breathing. And it also is the major one for digestion of food. And in our previous podcast, we mentioned many, many times, it's done through the vagus nerve, the 10th cranial nerve. So basically, no frills, okay? It's, uh, it just keeps us alive and does good housekeeping, pure and simple. Then Mother Nature had a quantum leap in evolution, and that is the mammalian brain. Ah, emotions. Think of life without feelings and emotions. We have that, and whoever has a little pet, Alexia loves animals, okay, if you have a little dog, if you have a little cat, they have emotions, they have a mammalian brain. And what you see is tender, loving care of their family and their children. That is emotions. And then the third layer, the next quantum leap, is, I'm being a little simple about this, but the human part of the brain, the thick uh, cortex, okay? So those are the three major parts. The human brain, of course, the thick cortex would be more for what we call thinking, especially abstract, abstruse, higher level thinking. Oh, okay, pretty simple. Try on brain, three parts, okay. Now, Alexia loves to help people and she always insists on giving a takeaway, okay. I tend to be a little more theoretical. So here are the practical apps for one, two, three. Reptilian brain, mammalian brain, and the the uh, human uh, cortex brain, okay? So for the first one, the most primitive, the reptilian brain, okay, is the key thing there is that is the, our key to the understanding of how to relieve stress, how to recover, okay? And that is through, remember, that vagus nerve. That's the parasympathetic, slow down, rest and digest recovery nerve. We all have that. Mm -hmm. So in future sessions, we will devote a lot of time to show you how to engage and use the vagal nerve to your benefit, especially to sum it up 
for stress relief. That's the key. How about a takeaway for the mammalian brain? The key there is the eponym for the mammalian brain is also called the limbic system or the emotional brain. That's the key. So that brain is involved with behavior, especially addictive behavior, because that's where the pleasure center is located. If you like fancy language, it's called the nucleus accumbens. And that's where those chemicals of addiction are. And we all know, as we go through life, your classical garden variety addictions is cigarettes, nicotine, and alcohol, and uh, cocaine, and heroin, and all sorts of drugs. And they all work by hijacking your pleasure center, which is in the mammalian brain, the emotional brain. Wow, the understanding of that will really free you up in so many ways. In future podcasts, we'll be devoting a special section just for that to help out people. Well, how about the human brain, the cortex? That's that third layer, the most recent one. And there, see, is that the understanding of the, the cortex there, the key thing is cortical control. So when children are born, it takes about six years to get that myelinization. That's just a fancy word for nerve development there from the cortex to do guess what? To control the emotional brain. That's our CEO. And each one of us in our own lives, you know, are the CEO of the emotional brain, the limbic system. So is in future sessions, we will show you how to get cortical control, okay, over the emotional brain, which we all have, which tends to have a life of its own and run away. And we will have a special section on how to do that through neuroplasticity. And the more you do neuroplasticity in common language, what do we call that? Habit formation, sound familiar? That is your strength. And the neuroplasticity, we'll do a special section on that because that is a new major medical breakthrough unto itself. So is Alexia and I, thank you so much for having us today in your home. And we will look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And today was just a little overview of where we're heading in the future. Alexia and I say thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.